Golve, the gold-greedy Vanir, went to Midgard with a plan. She distributed gold armlets and brooches among humans, claiming it would bring them happiness. However, her actions led to chaos instead. People began to argue and fight over the newfound wealth. Greed overcame communities, and friendships were broken. Disturbed by the consequences of Gulvig's actions, the Asgardians intervened. You claim to bring good, yet you've sown discord, they told her, sending her away from Midgard. The allure of gold had proven too potent, even when given freely, and the Asgardians knew that the chaos in Midgard had to be quelled, lest it escalated into a crisis beyond control. The Vanir were a tribe focused on fertility, prosperity, and nature, contrasting the Asgardians who were more associated with war and sky. Njord, the patriarch of the Vanir, was a god of the sea and wealth. He resided in Noatun and had dominion over wind and weather. Unlike Gulveg, whose generosity led to chaos, Njord had a more balanced approach. When humans asked for his help, he granted it in a way that maintained the natural order, thus fostering true prosperity rather than discord. However, Njord's personal life was complicated. He was married to his sister, a practice not accepted among the Asgardians. The pair had two children, Frey and Freya, who would later become significant figures in both the Vanir and Asgardian pantheons. Despite the social taboo, their union was a powerful one, reflecting the Vanir's close relationship with the natural world and its cycles. Gulveig returned to Midgard, defying the Asgardians' orders to stay away. Her presence reignited chaos as humans scrambled for the gold she freely distributed. Gulveig was brought before Odin in his hall, where she started distributing gold among the Asgardians. Her actions sowed seeds of greed and discord even in Asgard. Attempts to eliminate her failed. When pierced by spears or burned, she simply rose again, her influence growing stronger. Despite numerous attempts to end her life, Gulveig was remarkably resilient. Finally, Odin, realizing the futility of killing her through conventional means, used his most powerful magic to imprison her in a hidden realm. While not technically dead, she could no longer influence Asgard or Midgard, effectively neutralizing her disruptive power. The Vanir were furious that Gulveig, whom they considered a being of significance, was imprisoned. They demanded her release and reparations, intensifying tensions between the two godly clans. The Asgardians tried to offer the Vanir compensation, but the Vanir wanted more. They saw themselves as equals and demanded equal rights and offerings. This didn't sit well with the Asgardians. Odin sought advice from Mimir, the Keeper of Wisdom. But the price for this wisdom was high. Odin had to sacrifice an eye. That was too much for him. Baldr, the gentle god, suggested making peace with the Vanir. Many Asgardians agreed, but Odin had reservations. He knew that the greed for gold and the conflict between the Asgardians and the Vanir wouldn't end easily. The Asgardians knew that the Vanir wouldn't simply back down. They prepared for battle. Tyr, Heimdall, Thor, and Loki spoke for Odin and convinced the majority. Thus, the Asgardians went to war against the Vanir. Odin threw his spear Gungnir, igniting the first war. The Asgardians thought they were invincible, but they were mistaken. The Vanir struck back and even breached Asgard. Even the powerful weapons of the Asgardians Gungnir and Mjolnir couldn't prevent it. The Vanir had magical powers unknown to the Asgardians. Finally, both sides wanted no more war. They made peace. The Asgardians granted the Vanir equal rights and offerings. To seal the peace, they exchanged hostages. Hönir was chosen as the leader by the Asgardians. Both sides had lost much, but they also gained something. A lesson in humility and the realization that even gods can't do everything. The peace was fragile, but it was a start. Hönir was made leader by the Vanir and was given Mimir as an advisor. But when Hönir couldn't make decisions without Mimir, the Vanir felt betrayed. They killed Mimir and sent his head back to Asgard. 
However, Odin was able to preserve Mimir's head through magic. He placed spells on it so that the head could continue to reveal wisdom. In this way, even in death, Mimir became a source of wisdom for Odin. As hostages, the Vanir sent some of their most important members, including Njord and his children, Frey and Freya. Njord had to leave his sister behind in Vanaheim and look for a new wife in Asgard. Both sides had made compromises, and peace was established, yet it was a peace full of tensions and new beginnings. What the future would hold was still unclear, but at least for the moment the warfare had ended, and both sides had learned valuable lessons. However, this story is not yet over. Frey moved to Asgard with his wife Gerd and gained great respect there. He had previously had close ties with the Grazen and now brought that experience with him. His sister Freya also became an important figure in Asgard. She taught the Asgardians the magic of the Vanir and was especially valued by humans. Her beauty even caught the attention of giants, leading the Asgardians into several dangerous battles. As Freya traveled the world, she continually searched for her lost husband, Ut. She often changed her name and cried golden tears because she could not find him. As a sign of reconciliation between the Asgardians and the Vanir, both sides spat into a cauldron, mixed their saliva, and created a man of great wisdom, whom they named Kvasir. From then on, the Vanir were incorporated into the Asgardian community and were also referred to as Asgardians. Peace was established, but both sides knew it was a fragile peace. However, for the moment, the Asgardians and Vanir lived in harmony, each enriched by the knowledge and skills of the other.